I just want to make something clear. Um, some people seem to think, uh, based on the comments that I've received on the last couple of videos, that I'm somehow making a case for what is colloquially known as free will. I am not. <laughs> um, I'm sort of, as I always tell people, agnostic, or perhaps ignostic is more accurate in terms of my view of free will and determinism. Um, and I think that in some ways it's something of a false dichotomy. Uh, but in many ways, I think just about every kind of dichotomy may be a false one. <laughs> so, let me explain. Um, I won't... I, I'm always suspicious of the term free will, um, but I'm, also, I'm equally suspicious of the idea of determinism, because I see elements of both in my life. I see the elements of both in, in my existence. For example, there's a lot that was that is sort of my facticity, as Sartre would call it, or, you know, um, a lot of stuff is just sort of seems to be determined for me. I'm subject to gravity. That's determined. I have no control over that. I was born. I have no control over that. I was born as a male. I have no control over that. I was born in a place called Canada. I have no control over that. I was born into a certain family. I have no control over that. It just goes on and on. A ton of that stuff is my facticity. My choices are limited by my circumstances. I don't have a choice right now to go and lay down under a palm tree because it's 40 degrees below zero here right now um, and there are no palm trees. <laughs> um, so there's all kinds of things that are determined, to, determined and that kind of box me in. I have no control over that. Um, so you sort of, you know, all kinds of things would say that or all kinds of things would point to me living in a determined universe. But in some ways, it's not determined, because I have a faculty of choice, or it looks for all the world as though I do. Um, I have the choice of going to work today or not going to work today. <laughs> Nobody's forcing me to go. But if I don't go to work today, I have to accept the consequences. Um, I have the choice of, uh, I don't know, obeying the laws or not obeying the laws here in the country I live in. If I choose not to obey the laws, nothing, nobody can stop me from breaking the laws. But there are consequences <laughs> to doing so. So yeah, I, you know, again, I would say that we do and we do not live in a deterministic universe. We do and we do not have something approaching free will. Now, people would say that that's kind of crazy. You have to sort of stake out your claim. And I said, no, I, I, I definitely don't believe that at all. Because again, I'm not bound by, or I do not believe myself, or I'm not convinced that I'm bound by the three cardinal rules of logic. Um, identity, non-contradiction, and the excluded middle. Because I'm a human being, and human beings do seem to be contradictory and paradoxical. Now, um, or at least in many ways, we seem to be contradictory and paradoxical. In certain ways, we're very consistent. Western logic has that handicap which kind of screws it up, if you ask me, or taints it from the very beginning. My logic, as I always tell people, is based more, as you can tell by my nickname, Anekantavad, is based more on the Indian conception of logic. In particular, I refer to the concept of Syadvada, where it's the theory of maybe, uh, or in some ways. In other words, in some ways I live in a deterministic universe, or in some ways I don't live in a deterministic universe. I seem to have so much of what goes on in my life determined for me, I have no control over it, but I do seem to have a faculty of choice. I seem to have the capacity to make certain choices. It doesn't... Maybe I don't have any way to prove it, but I can't... It does seem to be inevitable that I have to make choices. I can't just sort of let life happen to me. Although I suppose that is a trap that one can fall into, I suppose. It, it seems to be inherent in, in Benatar's position that life is just something that happens to you. You are on the receiving end of everything that takes place in life. Um, that's, you know, pleasure and suffering. That just, it, it narrows your options to that starkly. Um, but I would say no, because I, I do seem to have a fair amount of choice, or it looks as though I do have a fair amount of choice. So I'm not saying that we have free will. I'm not saying that we are masters of our fate. I'm not quite so sure that we are. And that's why I think that, say, Amor Fati is a way of achieving mastery of a fate that we cannot control. Um, when you love something for what it is, unreservedly, unconditionally, in a sense, you are mastering it. You are loving it 
you are accepting it, you are wholeheartedly embracing it um, as a means of mastering that which is not in your control. Um, so, free will, determinism, it's posited that these are mutually exclusive. I'm not so sure if that's actually sustainable. I don't know if they are mutually exclusive. We seem to live in a universe that is simultaneously determined and crying out for choice. Um, a lot of the people that I've debated on this issue in the last few days have said that, have come up with a position that I find somewhat unsustainable because they say that we live in a hard deterministic universe and all of our choices are determined and the cho the idea of choice is a complete illusion, but we still have to make a choice in life, i.e. not to breed. We still have to make a choice to, in any, in any case, to do the right thing. This is one of the things that I... <laughs> One of, the re one of the things that makes me believe that Christianity is something of a conspiracy, because it's implied that you have free will, but it's also implied that you are utterly responsible for everything and you're completely powerless and at the mercy of something higher than yourself, i.e. God. Um, it, it's almost as though, and Nietzsche seems to imply this, that free will is a conspiracy cooked up by, the, <laughs> by Christianity to trap us, to put us in a double bind, um, to say that you're in charge of everything, even though you're completely helpless before God. And you have really no power at all, but you have the freedom to choose. And you are responsible for what your choices are, even though you're making choices based on an extreme paucity of information. Um, so, again, I, I guess I don't really want to get into that aspect of free will as a conspiracy. But it somehow, it often seems to be sold to people that way. And uh, I, you know, that makes me really wary of people who posit the idea of free will. Um, I kind of smell a rat when I, when I, <laughs> when I hear that. Um, but I also smell a rat when I hear people positing the view of hard determinism coupled with responsibility for our actions. We have no choice. Everything that we do is determined. And we, therefore, we can't be the cause of anything. We're just on the receiving end of everything. We're the the uh, um, object of the universe. The universe, it, we're, we're sitting in that car that I mentioned yesterday. We're looking out the rear view window and the world is going by and we're more or less just passive observers, or observers of it. Um, and we can't really change anything. We can't do anything. We can't make any choices. But we're still responsible. You see, that's, that's almost the reverse image of the Christian double bind. <laughs> um, it's each one seems to be aimed at um, making people responsible for things that they can't change, that they have no control over. Um, madness, double bind, and it works both ways. Just to clarify.